Hello, guys. About the IP routing technology part one, we already know what's the important function of the layer three devices, right? According to the IP routing table, the layer three devices can help us for the message between different IP segments. So now let's see how many different type of routing devices in our network. The first the basic one is the router. It's very typical layer 3 devices. And the, the main function is provide the forwarding process between different IP segments. And we can support multiple dynamic protocol or maybe static, uh, uh, static routing. And also we can provide some layer 3 switch. And usually layer 3 switch will be deployed in the distribute layer or maybe core layer. And the main function is provide the forwarding between different IP segments as, as soon as possible. Because about the layer 3, the main function is the hardware forwarding process is very strong. And also the firewall can provide the message to forward it between different IP segments. But except this, except this function, we also can provide some security function. And also we can provide some export gateway. The message between different IP segment forwarding, this is a basic function. Except this one, maybe we can provide some uh, application or maybe some behavior control on the export gateway. And uh, in some network, some customer also use some software routing capability on the hardware server. So you will find you have lots of server, but provide a function like the router, like the firewall, something like this. But all of them can provide the function to force a message between different IP segments. This is a basic function. And uh, only consider about the message forwarding between different IP segments. We can divide it into two plans. The first one is control plan. And about the control plan, we say how to force a message successfully. The most important one, you have to get a correct IP routing table. So about the control plan, the function is build and maintain the path to different IP network. You can think build and maintain the IP routing table. For example, now if our network configuration is ready, we have to know all the IP segment information on our network. Maybe in, uh, in the future, you will add a new device or maybe add some new links. Or maybe because of the broken some device or maybe some link is deleted, are deleted. So in this scenario, you have to dynamically maintain your IP routing table to make sure that every entry in your routing table are correct. So this is a basic function of the control plan. And usually we will see the routing table. And another one we call is forwarding plan. And about the forwarding plan, we have to query the routing table based on the destination IP address of the packets. So about this plan, maybe we will directly take the destination IP address to match the forwarding table and find the correct information, for example, which out interface, or maybe what's the next hope, what's the next hope IP address, and how to get the correct uh, MAC address information, right? Because according to this information, we will do the re-encapsulation successfully, we can send the message out. So the basic one, lots of information, of course, from the routing table. And uh, we will use the queried outgoing interface to do the re-encapsulation, the date frame to the next hope device. Maybe it's the router, maybe it's the terminal. So we will usually will divide the devices to become two plan, control plan and forwarding plan. And of course, some devices, someone maybe say, we also have another plan about the management plan. This belongs to another part, how to manage the device. Not only um, main function for the message forwarding. About the message forwarding, we can focus on the control plan and the forwarding plan. So 
We say the routing table is very important for us. So how to make the routing table bigger and how to get lots of entries information. And in the routing table, we have three types of routing. The first one is direct connection routing. And about direct connection routing, that means, for example, this is a router or maybe layer three switch. We will give an IP address for the active interface. And then when you check the routing table, you will find the direct routes. And uh, the direct connection routing includes the network to which the router is directly connected. So this is a basic one. If you give the correct IP address, you can get this routing information. But in our network, maybe, for example, there are three routers directly to connect with each other. But except this router, maybe in our network, we still have the other links are not directly connected with the router. We also need to let the router know what the other network link in your topology. So we can let our administrator to add the link one by one to let you know, except the direct routing, we still have the other routing like the uh, segment one, two, three, and four, and we can use a command to add. And this one we call it static routing. So about the static routing, like the name, administrator have to manually configure routing information. And uh, the disadvantage is unaware of the network topology changes, we also need a human adjustment. For example, we add a new link we have to, in all the devices, add the static link. If we delete the link, maybe we also have to delete the static routing on each devices. So manually to do all the configuration. So about this scenario, the static routing only suitable for small and simple network. If your network is very complex, you will say you will find the administrator working is too busy. So if some complex network, we suggest to deploy the dynamic routing protocol. And about the dynamic routing, that means at the beginning, if we add the IP address of the routers, so everyone will have the direct routing information. And then maybe we can add some dynamic routing configuration on the devices. Then all the router will dynamically exchange the routing information. We can share all the routing information with each other, right? For example, I will tell you how many direct routes from my site. And my neighbor also told me something I will share you together. So finally, the router will know everything. So this is the basic function of the dynamic routing. The advantage is we can ability to automatically adjusting, uh, adjust the routing information if the network topology, right? If one link is broken, the direct router will find the broken as the first, uh, at first. Then I will share with my neighbor. Now my, this, uh, my link is broken, please delete. And my neighbor delete later also will share uh, with his neighbor. So this is an advantage. If your network is very big or maybe not so stable, stability, so maybe you can deploy the dynamic routing information. And the disadvantage is because how to get the routing information from the other router, we will exchange the packets, right? I will send some packets to you, let you know now what's the routing information from my site. So about this information, we will take some resources. And this also need an additional CPU to deal with the message. So this is a disadvantage. If your network is bigger and complex, um, or maybe in your network you have lots of layer three devices, maybe you will need so many resources uh, to exchange the uh, packets from the dynamic routing protocol. But if you use static, it's very easy. We don't need to change everything because we get uh, every information from the administrator. So this is three type of the routing table. We only have three type. 
and uh, like this topology, we have lots of link, right, to connect with each other, and uh, we also to give the correct IP address of each interface and what's the mask. And here there is uh, the yellow link, only 10 Mbps. This is a bandwidth, and another link maybe is one gigabit. And the routing table is is a basic for the router's judgment for forwarding the message. So this is a basic function. If we have the routing information, then we can help the message out. If we only add the physical interface of the router, then we can get the direct routes. But in this topology, like the router 1, I only have three direct routes connect with R2 and R3 and another interface of the F0-0. But the other link, like the R3 and R2 link, I want that to know this information, right? Because this link is not directly connected with route 1. So we need the another two type, maybe static way, maybe dynamic way to let R1 know all the network segment. Then we can forward the message successfully. For example, about the route 1, the routing table, the main parameters, the first one is the routing source, right? How to get this segment? How to get this IP routing information? We can have direct connect routing, we can have dynamic or maybe static. Of course, about the dynamic, pay attention. In the real devices, we will have lots of dynamic protocol like the OSPF, like the RIP, like ISIS, BGP, something like this. So we were directed to let you know which protocols to get this information. But here, I only add the dynamic routing here to let you know we have three types to get the routing source. And the next line is the destination address and the mask. We, when we receive the message from the network, we will take the destination IP address to match the entry of the routing table, right? We will take the destination IP address to use the mask with the entry and match one by one. If we can match, that means this one is successfully to send out. So this is the, the second line is very important. The correct mask and then the correct destination IP address. So about the route one, now we have three directory routes, right? So this is a destination address and the mask. And the next line is the next hope address. And the next hope is a detailed IP address. We'll show you if you want to visit this destination address, who can help you to do it? So this is the next hope. And the next one is the outer interface. Outer interface is a physical interface of the router itself. If you want to send out the message, which interface should be do the encapsulation and then to, to be the outbound interface and send out. And the next one is a metric. If we want to get this information, how many cost, how much cost we will do. And because maybe later we will talk about the detail, how to get the, how to get the best path, maybe we will compare the metric. So there are main parameters in the routing table and what's the function of each table. And the next one, let's say the real IP routing table, you can use the command show IP routing, uh, show IP route and to check the detail information. And here we will tell you that how many connected amongst the direct connected routes and the static routes or dynamic type what's the parameter destination something like this so like this example about the r1 we use a show ip route and we can got lot we can get a lot of information and here is a type how to make to become the ip routing entry and the source same is connected direct connection route as a static, 
R is R I P E and O is O S P F. And about the O S P F, pay attention. We also have lots of type, like some inter area, external area, and also have type one, type two, something like this. And pay attention about O S P F. This also is a key dynamic protocol in our course, and we will talk in the future. And uh, the star is a candidate default. The star means this root is a default root. Pay attention. Default root means the destination and the mask of them to become zero. Not mean static root. Okay. Maybe we use a static way to get the star root. Maybe we use a dynamic way. So the star only means this is a default root. And uh, the gateway of last resources is not set. Indicates the default routing address. No default routing here in this example. And then let's see the detail entry. The first part is a source. We will have the uh, different uh, characteristic to indicate different source type. And uh, the next part is a target network and also includes the mask. And then is the administrative distance and the metric. How to select the best path? We will compare these two parameters. And uh, how to, who can help you to force the message to the destination? This is the next IP address. And which outer interface can be sent out? This is the local export interface built to this router. So this is the detail information. If you use the command show IP route in your devices, and later we also will do some practice for the routing information. And in the practice video, you can see the detail. And the next step is administrative distance. We say if we have multiple link on our network, maybe we have to select the best one. And one parameters will be compared. This is administrative distance. And also in some vendor where we will call this one is a routing priority to measure the trustworthiness of the routing source. And we hope when we compare to select the best path, the lower administrative distance value is a higher priority. Only the most trusted routing will be added into the routing table. So pay attention about this one. Of course, when we will compare the administrative distance parameter, if these two paths have the same destination, we will select the best one. If several paths we have different destination, all of them should be the best one. Okay, so pay attention about this one. Later, I, I also will tell you the main principle. And the administrative distance default value is the vendor defined. That means, for example, about the static route, uh, different vendors have different uh, network devices, but all of them will have the router. But they can define by themselves what's the default administrative value of this different type of resources. Like in Reijie, the direct connected routing, the administrative value is zero. Static is one. The OSPF is 110. RIP is 120. Unreachable routing is 255. And about the administrative distance value, the range is from 0 to 255. And the smaller one is better. Except the direct connection routing, the zero cannot be changed. All the other administrative value, we can use command to change to maybe design your requirement that which path should be the best path. And uh, about the RIP, for example, if in this network, to network topology one, two, three, if we run, uh, accept uh, config the IP address of each router and uh, all the router will get the direct routes, right? But about the non-direct routes, how to get this information? If we use the RIP, 
This is a routing table of the Route 1. About the Route 1, how to wait the destination 192.168.3.0.24, this is a link of the Route 3. So if we run the RIP, RIP protocol, and about the Route 1, we will select the Route 3 is our best path in the network. Because about the RIP, we will consider less route uh, less router pass through this path should be better and the administrative distance is 120 but in this scenario if we run the ospf in our network and also run the rape at the same time according to the ospf we also can get the uh, non direct route of 192.168.3.0.24, but maybe OSPF will select the R2 is the best uh, next hope because about OSPF we will compare the bandwidth. Higher bandwidth pass is better. If now we get the same destination 192.168.3.0, one from RIP one from OSP, finally we will select OSPF as the best path because compare the administrative, the value 110 is smaller than 120. So this is a function of the administrative. And another parameter is a metric. And the metric is a parameter used by routing protocol to measure the metric of the path. And uh, we have to do the sum of course of all the region destination. And different uh, protocol, we have different uh, metric. And how to factors affecting the metric, we can have line bandwidth, the number of hops, and some lace, uh, latents and some utilization, something like this. For example, about the static, the metric is zero because we don't need any resources to, uh, to do the static uh, routing. Between devices, we don't exchange any message. And about the OSPF, we will consider the bandwidth. Higher bandwidth is better. And the higher bandwidth, we will get a lower cost. And we hope the uh, lower cost value should be better. But about the RIP, we will take the hop, hop account. If the pass pass through less routers, we will think the pass is better. So if now in this network, we want to get the target of 192.168.2.0.24. This also is a link connected with R3. This is a link. And if the entry we use the OSPF, this path is the best path, right? Because about the yellow link, we only have 10 Mbps. But the, about the white link, we have one, uh, one gigabit bandwidth of each link. But if we use a RIP, we will select the blue one to become the best one because only pass through one account, one router. So different dynamic routes will also will use different uh, metric to select the best path. And the next parameter of the router is the next hope. The next hope address is determined by the routing table. And the next hop is very similar function like the terminal uses a gateway. Who can help you to forward to this destination? This is uh, next hop. For example, like this topology, if PC2 want to communicate with PC3, the same topology, right? Then the destination of the first step, the destination IP is a PC3 IP. But uh, the next hope, the first next hope is a gateway because the next hope will directly to have an influence, have an influence to get the correct uh, MAC address. So the next hope of the PC3 is 192.168.1.254. This is a gateway. 
after send to the router, the router and the PC3 belong to the same LAN. No need for the next hop because according to the direct routing, we can find the correct destination. So we will directly send to the PC3. And the address of the next hop when the package returns. For example, I already get the message from PC2. Now I have to give a reply. Who will become the correct next hop of the PC3? Also should be the gateway of the PC3. So this is a very simple topology. And uh, a little complex topology to explain the next hop like this one. The next hop is the best path chosen by the routing devices, also based on the routing table. For example, now PC2 and PC3 want to communicate with each other. About PC2, I still will send the message to the gateway. The gateway is the first next hop sent to route 1. And then the route 1 will take the destination IP address 192.168.2.100 to match your routing table. And uh, if we can find the correct routing, then we also know who is this destination IP next hope, right? And about the next hope, maybe from static route, maybe from dynamic route, depends on your configuration. Maybe now the routing table will tell you your next hop address is 172.16.1.2. This is the IP address of R2. So the message will be sent to R2. And about the R2, the next hop best is the R3. 172.16.1.6 and send to route 3. About the route 3 takes the destination IP address to match the IP routing table, we will find the we, we are in the same IP segment. So the message will be directly sent to PC3. So this is the main process. And on each media router, like the route 2 and the route 1, we will find the correct or best next hope according to your IP routing table. So if your IP routing table think route, route 2 is the best one, I will send to route 2. If we think route 3 is the best one, we will direct it to send to route 3. So basically, IP routing table is very important. We'll finally decide which router can help you to follow the message. And how to have an influence, how to make the pass for example, according to the bandwidth, route 1, route 2, route 3 is the best path. So you have to use a correct dynamic routing protocol like the OSPF. If you choose a RIP, you will think not the best path like route 1 and route 3 directed to follow the message, directed to send the message out. So we say about the control plan, the administrator can do lots of work select the correct static or maybe dynamic routing protocol. And uh, if you use a dynamic routing protocol, which protocol is better? So you have to master the detail of each protocol and then to add the correct configuration. Finally, if we get the correct control plan table, like the IP routing table, then the router, how to encapsulation, how to get the correct MAC address of the next hop, and how to do the encapsulation, they will do automatically. But we have to give the correct network plan and to give the correct configuration. So this is a parameter of the next hop. And the next one of the routing entry addition principle. We see the IP routing table is so important to let all the devices know how to follow the message successfully. So this one is very important. And like the topology we talked about last point point, if we find the, if we send the message to the destination, we have multiple next hope, we have multiple outgo out interface, how to select the best one. So we can have two. Uh, we can have some action when we build the IP routing table on the control plan, 
And there are also some principles we have to know. The first one we have to know is only the best path will be added into the routing table to become the routing entry and then to help the router to forward the message successfully. And the principle is first we have to compare the target network put into the routing table in different tag, uh, target networks. For example, we have two segments. One is 1.1.1.0/24. Another one is 2.2.2.0/24. They have different uh, target network. Both of them should be added into the routing table. But if we find there's a target network is same, one is 1.1.1.1/24, one 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 another one also is 1.1.1.0/24. One 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 but one from row A, another one from row B. So we have to select the best one. And how to select the best one? First parameter we have to compare of the other administrative distance. We will manage the path with the lowest administrative distance into the routing table. For example, we can fix 1.1.1 static routing and the outer interface is row 1. And another one from OSPF, the next hope is row, is row B. So in this scenario, we will select the static way, right? Because the administrative is 1, is smaller than the OSPF, 110. So this is the first parameter we have to know. If the administrative is same, for example, both of two paths from the OSPF, one from the neighbor A, another from neighbor B. How to select the best one? We will compare the metric. So, row one, we will do the sum all of the cost of this path. Compare the metric and with the neighbor row B. We will select the lowest metric. For example, row A told me the metric is 10, but about row B, we need 20 metric to go to the destination. We hope row A is better. And if the metric also is same, all of them will be added into the routing table and finally to provide the load balance. So this is the main function. And this function, pay attention, first step, we will compare the target network. If the target network is same, we will continue to compare the parameters like administrative distance, like the metric, and finally maybe will be provide load balance. If the target is different, all of them should be added into the routing table. This process belongs to the control plan, so pay attention about this one. If now we already so this is a definition of the load balance. If now we already get the IP routing table, right? And uh, everything already exists on this table, then we have to force the message out. When we force the message out, we only have one principle. This principle we call is longest subnet mask matching. The routing devices looks up the routing table according to the longest subnet mask matching principle based on the destination IP address of the packets. And uh, forwarding based on query the result. And if the query is unsuccessful, finally the packet will be dropped. So I also will show you an example. For example, now, PC1 to connect with router 1 and row 1 connect with the other terminals. And about row 1, we have two paths, one for 172.16.1.0/24 and another one for 172.16.0.0/16. Pay attention please. These two paths based on uh, belong to different target network. Right, because they have different uh, masks. Although maybe someone says the second path 
the range is bigger and also includes the first pass, but they also belong to different target network. So in this scenario, if we already have the routing table, according to the last point point, we talk, the, talk about the principle, how to make the routing table big, bigger. And now if we receive the message from PC1 and the destination is 172.16.1.1, this is the destination IP address. We will take the destination IP address to match our routing table. And we will find the first uh, the first uh, entry can match this IP routing table, uh, can match the destination IP, right? Because we take the 24 mask to compare the destination IP is 172.16.1. This one is same with the routing entry. But we also take the second entry to match the IP, uh, the destination IP. We will take the first 16 bits to match the information. It's 172.16. Also, it's same. That means these two paths, entry information, both of them can help route one to fall to the destination. And which one is better? We will find the mask. Longest subnet mask is best. So we will select the first one. According to the first entry, finally, the message will be sent out through through the interface F01. And another one, if we receive the message, the destination IP is 172.16.2.1. If I take this des uh, destination IP to match the entry, the first entry cannot match. So we will continue to match the second one. Second one can match this entry information. So finally, the message will be sent out through the interface two. So when we, according to the following plan to force the message out, only one principle is the longest subnet mask matching. We will no longer to consider that the first uh, metric may be from OSPF, so we have to use the first one. The second one belong to the RIP cannot be used. No, according to the forwarding plan, we only have one principle to consider about the mask. Of course, this destination can match multiple entries. We will take this principle, longest subnet mask. But if we only have one entry to match, we will directly to use these parameters and finally to forward out. If in this scenario, for example, I receive the message destination IP is 1.1.1.1, we only have two entry. Both of them cannot match the destination IP. Finally, this message will be directly discard. So this also is very big difference with the MIC address table. About the MIC address table, if we cannot find the entry, we will do the flood. But about the router, if the routing table is not matched, we will direct it to drop the packet. So this is the biggest difference. So this part is about basic routing information, also includes some parameters in the routing table. We have lots of parameters like the destination mask and the routing source type and some administrative distance, something like this. And we also talk very important two principles, one for the control plan and another one for the forwarding plan. And later, Next video, we also will have a brief summary, uh, have a brief introduction of the static route and the dynamic route. Later, we will have a detailed video to talk about the detail of three types of three types uh, routing information, how to configure the direct routes, how to configure static, how to configure the dynamic, and we will choose OSPF. That's uh, part two of the IP routing technology.